My name is Michael Wordswamp, Michael Elliott Wordswamp, and I'm testifying on the behalf of Jesus Christ. I have, if I don't write a prophetic dream down in my dream journal and it's prophetic, God will write it on my heart and mind so that I never forget it. And I had this dream about seven years ago. For the first time ever, I feel like God revealed to me that, um, that there was a fruit in the dream that I tasted and saw. I think God revealed to me today for the first time in seven years that he was revealing that that is, that's what the forbidden fruit looked like and that's what it tastes like. Um, I honestly believe he allowed me to, to taste what it tasted like and, uh, um, and see what it looked like in this dream that I had seven years ago. It was around the time he started anointing my, my life really hard with the prophetic dreams when I was 21, about 21, 22. So this was a dream. Um, I, um, I... I was I woke up in my old house in Bayview and it was nighttime outside. I saw some stalks out my window, like like six stalks about this high, uh in in my backyard. I go outside, nighttime. I see the stalks and there's about six of them, but there is only like five pieces of these fruit hanging off of these stalks. It was just a stalk, just a uh, like this this fat greenish, brownish sticking out the ground up to here. Um, and there was like two pieces of fruit on one stalk, two pieces of fruit on another stalk, and one piece of fruit on, on another stalk. The other four stalks were like totally, uh, one, three stalks were like totally empty. Um, didn't have nothing on them. I picked one and it was rock hard, but it was ribbed. It was like ribbed and crimped around the whole thing. It was green as big as a small melon. Um, it was light green. Um, and it was ribbed, but it was rock hard. And I broke it open, it opened kind of like an orange. Um, I took a bite of it and it was the best fruit I had ever tasted in my whole life. That's actually the best food I have ever tasted in my whole life. Like it's that good that it's only meant for God. Like that's how good it tasted. So that's another reason I was convicted that it really tasted like the forbidden fruit, the knowledge of good and evil. And I'm like, oh, that's so good. So I grab my shirt like this and I grab all other four bulbs of the, this fruit, I stuck it in my shirt and I couldn't even get carry all of them. I think I left one on, on the stock because they were that big. Um, I looked to my right and not my next door, but the next next door. There was Agnes next door and then my friend Bill lived next to her. There's a party going on in his backyard and it's a bu bunch of like high school kids. And um, so I, I go over there and there's like a party, everyone's having fun. But it's a shirtless party. Most of them were girls, totally bare-breasted, but wearing blue jeans, all of all different ones. And then I see um, a keg, like a, like like they were brewing and cooking wine. They were making wine, but they were brewing and cooking it. And a girl that looks like my friend Danielle came up to me, bare-breasted. They're all having um, they all got red cups in their hand, and she walks up to me with one, and she said um, she said here, and she gave me a red cup. I grabbed it and I knew that it was this wine with a discernment of spirits. I took a drink and it was the best wine I had ever tasted in my life. It didn't taste like alcohol at all. It tasted just like that. It tastes like they were making the wine out of the forbidden fruit, that fruit that was growing in the yard. They made wine out of it. Uh, I knew it had alcohol in it, but it didn't taste like alcohol at all. Um, it, uh, it just tasted like that, like juice of that fruit, but I knew it was alcoholic and it was really, really good. It was the best flavor I'd ever had in my life. So I took an, uh, I took a drink of it, really good. But then God made me lucid, let me understand that I was in a dream. When there's people around me, when we're doing stuff, they're always demons. So I knew that now this Danielle was a demon. So whenever I see them in my dreams, I either punch them, kick them, slap them, choke them, or spit on them, or do something to them. We're natural enemies, cats don't like dogs, dogs don't like cats. People that are like angelic or, um, uh, like God, I hate what's not like God naturally. So I took a big, big mouthful of it and I spit it in her face. And when I did, she made a very um, disturbing sound. She sounded like it burned beyond measure, like it was super painful, but she enjoyed it sexually at the same exact time. So um, it was like I spit acid in her face, but it turned her on. She made this noise like, Oh, like she was turned on by it, but it was very painful. And she looked at me like kind of irritated. 
And uh, when I did it, her face started melting, burning off, burning, rotting, and falling off. And when it was falling off, it was the most beautifully macabre thing that, got, that the devil has ever showed me in a nightmare. Um, it was rotting off her skin. And when it would fall off underneath her rotting flesh, would rotting, burning flesh would be doll face, like porcelain doll. And so uh, God gave me the ability to wiggle my feet in prophetic dreams to wake myself up if they get too terrifying. So I wasn't that scared, but I was ridiculously intrigued by the way that it looked, like her face. So I started running backward like that, and she started skipping like this to me. One foot, not in front of the other, just like this. Like that. She started skipping my way. So when I'm, I'm running backward, I look back. So I don't fall, but I'm not waking myself up yet. I totally know that I'm dreaming right now. And I look at her again, and now she's wearing a big, beautiful 1800 royalty, but evil gothic purple and black dress. Um, and she's got long black hair now down the here, and her face is still rotting off. And underneath it, she's got porcelain doll face. Like it's a total porcelain doll. And she's skipping to me like this. And um, I was like, I was observing her like this as I'm skipping backwards. And she got too close to me, so I just wiggled my feet, I woke up. Oh, uh, I don't know what it means exactly, but I know that it was prophetic. So there's no other reason God would write up my heart and mind like that and etch it in great detail. Um, so if you are a more anointed prophet or seer, ask God what it means, if it means anything. Um, I, I, I know it means something, but God gives me a lot of prophetic dreams and barely reveals. He, he's revealed to me that they're prophetic. But he almost never tells me, um, he, he, he tells me, I'd say, 10% of my prophetic dreams and I have one every night. So, um, uh, pray to God, ask him what it is. I think he has blessed me with the ability to have the prophetic dreams, but not as much at all, the ability to interpret them. So, pray to God before you watch it, or after you watch this, uh, ask him what it means, if it is of his will. Go to a church, accept Jesus as your savior, repent of your sins. Read the Bible to get to know him. He loves you perfectly. The devil hates you perfectly. The devil is real. And so is hell and so is heaven. The end is near. Repent. Jesus loves you.